Now, I'm a history buff. That's actually why I got into collecting firearms, especially historical pieces, because it's clear that world history and the evolution of firearms really go hand in hand and have influenced each other for centuries. I especially like to collect firearms from the Great Wars, World War I and World War II. In this series, I talk about a few iconic World War II sidearms, and I break it down into two parts, Axis powers and Allied powers. In this first video, part one, I discuss sidearms from the Axis powers, namely Japan, Germany, and Italy. Specifically, the Type 14 Nambu, the P08 Luger, the Walther PPK, and the M1934 Beretta, and how it still influences modern firearms today. Let's talk about it. Woo! It's go, 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 go time! First up, the P08 Luger. The Luger is the original 9mm, the OG. The 9mm Luger or Parabellum round was made for this pistol by the same Austrian designer, George Luger, and is still in use today as the most popular pistol caliber cartridge in the world. The Luger pistol was first developed in 1898 as an improvement to the C93 Burchard, which was the first mass-produced semi-auto pistol ever made. George Luger took the Burchard design and made it less bulky, awkward, and more practical. In 1908, it was adopted by the German military, and during World War II, it was the sidearm of the SS and the German army officers. The problem was, it was expensive to make, complicated, and hard to maintain, so the German military ultimately adopted the Walther P-38 in 1938. Not as cool looking, but definitely more simple, cheaper, and easier to maintain. This rig is commonly known to collectors as the Black Widow. The Black Widow was a military-issued Luger with black baked light grips. The magazines also have black baked light bottoms instead of aluminum bottoms. The rig also comes with a tool marked either 655 or 135. The top is marked with the year manufactured, either 41 or 42, which were the two years that the Black Widows were made. It was also marked BYF on the toggle, which was code for the Mauser factory where they were made. Remember, at the end of World War I, the signing of the Treaty of Versailles limited Germany's firearms production, so they often used codes to hide the manufacturing location. The Black Widow rig also includes an original black leather holster with the dates either 1941 or 1942 on the back to match the date on the pistol. The tool is not only a takedown tool, but a magazine speed loader, which actually comes in handy, makes loading the magazine easier so your thumb is not sore by the end of the range day. The Luger weighs 1.9 pounds, barrel length is 4.7 inches, and muzzle velocity is 1,200 to 1,300 feet per second. The action is a toggle locking system, which throws the toggle up and back, obstructing your sight for an instant. Push button mag release and a capacity of 8 plus 1 rounds of 9mm Parabellum. One thing I noticed, if you insert a full magazine with the breech closed, it's very difficult to chamber around. Loading the magazine with the breech open makes chambering a lot easier. The sights are tiny and kind of rudimentary, but they work. However, every time the action cycles, the toggle pulls up and obstructs your view, making rapid fire or even firing at a fast cadence very challenging in the accuracy department. It's harder to get back on target in between shots, so it definitely wouldn't be a good competition shooter.
Now the accuracy when just doing slow deliberate fire is not bad. You can either be accurate or shoot fast with this pistol, but you can't do both. It's marked Gesichert, where the safety is, which is German for secured. So up is fire and down is safe. The safety not as ergonomic as the 1911. You have to change your grip to engage and disengage. With my Luger, I noticed that the safety kept engaging on its own when I would chamber around. Even if it's not fully engaged and just falls slightly, the gun will not fire. A dangerous combination on the battlefield if you ask me, but I'm not sure if it's because my pistol is over 80 years old or if it's a flaw in the design. Malfunctions are pretty common in this pistol, but it could be also because the gun is old or I heard it's because of the magazine design. The Nambu has a similar magazine design and also prone to malfunctions. Here's the takedown lever. The extractor at the top of the bolt also acts as a loaded chamber indicator, which is pretty advanced feature for its time. This pistol has its original finish. And lanyard loop on the back. All the parts on this gun are hand fitted and numbered with some portion of the serial number engraved in each little part, even the firing pin. Next up, the Walther PPK. Now while the Luger was used by the German army soldiers in the SS, the high ranking officers were issued the Walther PPK. It was actually the gun that Hitler used to end his own life. But moviegoers know it as James Bond's favorite sidearm. This gun was used to inspire other sidearms during that period, like the Beretta 34, which we'll talk about in a bit, and the Russian Makarov. It was first developed at the Walther factory in 1931. The PPK stands for Polizei Pistol Criminal, which translates to Police Pistol Criminal. Criminal in German refers to a detective. The PPK was intended as a police detective's pistol. This PPK was made in 1939 for commercial use. It was one of the first successful double action, single action pistol and very high tech for its time. Comes with two seven round magazines. One is flush fit while the other has a thumb extension. Also comes in an original brown leather holster. Originally chambered in 765 by 17 millimeter, which is the same as 32 auto, but it has some bite to it. It's a very sexy pistol. It weighs 23.7 ounces, barrel length is 3.3 inches, nice brown baked light grips, high polished steel frame, lanyard loop at the bottom of the grip. The muzzle velocity is 1,000 feet per second, which is pretty fast for such a petite weapon. This gun is cleared. In double action, the trigger pull is over 11 pounds. And single action is just over six pounds. The safety also acts as a decocker and is pretty ergonomic. Push button mag release. Serrations at the top to mitigate glare. Loaded chamber indicator at the back of the slide, another high-tech feature. It even has a notch on the back of the hammer so that you can see the loaded chamber indicator when the hammer is not cocked. Tiny sights. Simple blowback design. In addition to the serial number being on the side of the frame, the last three digits are also lightly etched on the inside of the slide. 
This gun was very fun to shoot. Small and feisty. Pequeña pero picosa. Now you have to hold this gun like a revolver for two reasons. One, the slide extends further down on the frame compared to modern pistols. So not much real estate if you wanna use the modern high thumb forward support hand grip. You will end up having your support thumb directly on the slide while it cycles and can cause a malfunction. Secondly, that hammer bite is something awful. I had to be mindful to have a very low grip to try to mitigate the impact of that hammer bite. I was actually surprised about how accurate this gun was, even with those itty bitty sights. Third up on the list, the M1934 Beretta. In the early 1930s, the Italian army was impressed with the Walther PP and was considering adopting it as their military sidearm. Beretta, one of the oldest gun manufacturer in the world, established in the 1500s, did not want to lose a big military contract to their German competitor and asked for the opportunity to design a similar pistol. And thus, the M1934 Beretta was born and accepted by the Italian army in 1937. It became the favorite sidearm of Italy's infamous dictator, Benito Mussolini. And it was also the pistol used to assassinate Gandhi in 1948. It ultimately led to the development of the M9, which was the U.S. service pistol for over 30 years. The 34 Beretta is a very handsome pistol. It just looks fashion forward, like a fine Italian suit. It weighs one and a quarter pounds, barrel length is 3.4 inches, and has an open slide design. Heel magazine release, not the easiest to remove to be honest. And when you pull it out, it releases the slide. Open face magazine design. Even the magazine is sexy. I tell you, the Italians know fashion. It's chambered in 380 ACP, which the Italians call nine quarto. Capacity is seven plus one. and hard as hell to load. Notice that hammer bite made me change my grip real quick. I kept trying to find a grip that was less painful. I tell you that hammer bite is something awful. And when you pull out the magazine, the bolt goes home. Not the best for fast reloads. The muzzle velocity is 750 feet per second, which is the slowest of the four pistols that we're discussing today. Look at that hammer biting the hell out of my hand. For some reason, the hammer bite hurt worse on this Beretta than the hammer bite on the PPK. Maybe because the gun is a lot snappier for some reason. Left the web of my thumb red and sore. There are a few markings to note. On the left side of the frame, just above the grip, is the Italian Army Acceptance Mark, RE, which stands for Regio Esercito, which means Royal Army in Italian. Now let's talk about the left side of the frame. Pistols made during the fascist era are marked with their year of manufacture in two forms. The conventional date here is 1937 and the date on the fascist calendar in Roman numerals. The fascist calendar commenced on October 28, 1922. So this Roman numeral 15, you would add to the year 1922 and you get 1937 again, the year this pistol was made. The safety has a swivel type action. And the safety also acts as a slide lock and slide release. 
The hard rubber grips have a steel back to them to reinforce them and decrease grip breakage. Tiny sights, which just looks like it's very common for this era. Simple blowback design. The worst part of shooting this gun are the reloads. The heel magazine is less than ideal. You have to kind of come in at an angle and really shimmy it in. Not that all heel magazines are this difficult. My Russian Makarov has a better heel release design because it's much easier to load and unload. It's just a straight shot. Now the gun is accurate if you are willing to take the pain. When I was willing to take the pain with a somewhat high hold to have more control over the gun, then I was pretty accurate. But these outliers are from me being in pain and fear of that hammer bite. The M1934 stated production up into the early 1990s and ultimately evolved to the M9 or Beretta 92, which is the 9mm full-size pistol adopted by the U.S. military in 1985. The M9 maintains the same open slide design. There is a thumb safety here that's ergonomic and also a decocker. Push button mag release, thank God. Last up, the Type 14 Nambu. The Type 14 Nambu, so named because it was adopted by the Imperial Japanese Army in 1925, which was the 14th year of Emperor Taisho's reign. And it remained in service up until their surrender in 1945. It was named after Kijiro Nambu, the most prolific Japanese gun designer of the day and founder of Nambu Arms Manufacturing Company. The holster is a turtle shell style leather case. It's pretty tight when trying to draw from the holster. You have to kind of wiggle it out, which makes me wonder how they were expected to have a fast draw during battle. The holster has a small pouch in the front, probably for ammo. It's a locked breech pistol. The barrel length is 4.6 inches and it weighs two pounds. Push button magazine release. And just like the 34 Beretta, when you remove the magazine, the bolt goes home. Cocking knob and lanyard loop in the back. It ejects from the top like a Luger. Capacity is eight plus one rounds. Muzzle velocity is 950 feet per second. It has a short trigger pull and a magazine disconnect. The magazine is also similar to a Luger. At the bottom of the magazine, you should have the last three digits of the serial numbers that match the pistol. Grip angle, similar to a Luger. And the sights are Luger S as well. Guys, it's no wonder that the Nambu was thought to be a copy of the Luger because of these similarities in appearances. However, others suspect that it was a copy of the C96 Mauser broom handle pistol due to having a similar bolt action. The Type 14 Nambu is chambered in 8 by 22 millimeter Nambu, which was thought to be underpowered for a locked breech pistol and has similar ballistics to a 380 ACP. The safety is a swivel design like the 34 Beretta. The forward marking is a flame symbol, which means fire, and the back symbol is a Japanese peace symbol, which means safe. You will need your support hand to engage the safety. Other important markings to note, on the rear left side of the frame is Japanese for type 14. 
and on the rear right side of the frame is the arsenal indicator located in front of the serial number. Underneath that, you have the date that the pistol was manufactured. In front of that date has the character Sho to designate the reign of the Emperor Showa, also known as Hirohito, who took over his father's throne when the Emperor Taisho died of a heart attack. The first number indicates the year. The 19 stands for the 19th year of Emperor Showa's reign, which puts us at a date of 1944. And second number is the month of manufacturing, which here is eight for August. So we have August 1944, the date this pistol was made. The Type 14 Nambu pistol was a prime war trophy and highly desired souvenir for US Marines, soldiers, and sailors in the Pacific theater. However, I've never seen anyone be able to get through a full magazine without multiple malfunctions, except for in the movies. It has a reputation of being unreliable, poor quality, and outright dangerous. TFB TV has a video showing the gun literally shooting itself and almost the shooter for no reason. I'll put the link to the video in the description. Now, I usually believe that a gun is meant to be shot. I enjoy shooting my relics because I feel like I'm shooting a piece of history. But the Nambu just seems risky to me, and it just seems like a bad time at the range. Following World War II, firearm designer and entrepreneur Bill Ruger acquired a pair of Nambu pistols from a returning U.S. Marine, which he successfully duplicated in his garage and chambered it in 22 lr Thus, the Ruger Standard was born. They are very similar looking. Same grip angle, bolt action, and similar sights. Differences are the Ruger has a heel magazine release. And the safety is more like a thumb safety and also acts like a slide lock and release. Some people think the Ruger was actually inspired by the Luger because of the similarities in appearance. Other than the grip angle and the sights, I don't see a lot of similarities. The most likely scenario is that the Ruger was inspired by the Nambu, which was a copy of the Luger. Now, all of these pieces are highly collectible and just cool as hell to own and shoot. But the real question is, do they have anything on the sidearms of the Allied powers? In the next video, part two, I will be discussing the sidearms of the Allied powers during World War II, namely the US, Great Britain, France, and Russia. So please subscribe so you don't miss it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I really enjoyed making it. To see more videos on historical collections, please like, share, and subscribe.